How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. And what we're going to talk about is the music business or the actual business of music and why the old heads got to Super Bowl stage. And, you know, the Super Bowl just happened a few weeks ago. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed the halftime performance. Some people did not. Uh, some people were kind of neutral to it, kind of like myself. However, a lot of people had the kind of question of how come we didn't get like a younger cohort of artists on the Super Bowl seeing that a lot of people that we had on the Super Bowl, I think the youngest person was Kendrick Lamar. He was 35. Uh, a lot of people was around the 50 year old mark. And, and many people felt like, you know what? Um, a lot of people are kind of maybe stuck in their youth, stuck in their teenage, early 20 years. And let's transition to a new group of people. And I can understand that argument. You know, I'm a big fan of new music. I've always liked new music. I've always liked underground and independent music. I've always liked listening to the artists that most people don't listen to. However, I kind of also understand the business of music. And I think once we understand the actual music industry and how um, it's very, very much uh, based on connections and threads of people together, and a lot of people's job when they come into the music industry is figure out how they can make those connections. Because once you get the right connections, a lot of times it becomes very easy to become successful. And let me give an example. There's a rapper out of the Atlanta area called Young Thug, okay? Young Thug at one time was signed to um, Gucci Man. Gucci Man had some legal issues. And so he was getting ready to become incarcerated. And what he did was he released Young Thug out of his contract and Young Thug didn't sign a contract with Baby, right? And Baby has a relationship that's really, really strong with Universal Music. Has a, like maybe a three decade relationship with Universal Music. Then what Baby did was he now used his leverage to get Young Thug access to a lot of different opportunities and platforms that he normally would not have had access to through his relationship with Universal Music and then now Young Thug essentially almost now is institutionalized in the music industry. It had very little to do with the quality of the music. I'm not saying that the music is bad. It had very little to do with how talented uh, this artist is. It had very much to do with the fact that he got connected to the right people. He was part of the right thread, which allowed him to become successful. Now, did he put the work in? Yes. Did he go on the tours? Yes. But if he wasn't connected to those people, he probably would have not have had the success that he had. And he was a very young artist when this happened. Okay, we're talking about something that happened literally almost a decade ago. And that's what I want people to understand. While we're looking at this Interscope roster, we're seeing a lot of really, really young artists. And the Super Bowl primarily, really could low-key say it was an Interscope event. Okay? Everybody there was not signed, to, is not currently signed to Interscope, or everybody on that particular stage, um was not formally signed to an Interscope artist, but they have some relationship with Interscope by one way or the other. Now, if you look at this particular roster, Dre's still considered on Interscope. So is Eminem. So we already know how they got on that stage. Then we understand that 50 Cent was signed to Eminem at one time. We understand that Kendrick Lamar was an aftermath artist, which is a, a subsidiary of Interscope. So he got on through Dre. Then Dre, we all know he signed Snoop to Death Row, which is a Interscope, they call it a, a, I think they were doing their distribution, but they had a relationship with Interscope, right, through Death Row. And then Mary J. Blige does have some music that was distributed by Interscope. Okay, so everybody on that stage has a relationship with Interscope. And then we're gonna go even a little bit deeper into it because one of the things that can help you in business and help you understanding is to try to determine what the relationships are. And the relationships don't mean they're nefarious. It doesn't mean that there's this negative conspiracy going on. It just really means that people have a relationship and it's the relationship and the business opportunity and the business potential is the reason why these situations sometimes take place. Has very little to do with the creativity of the artist and not saying that these artists are not creative. It a lot of times has very little to do with um, their, their, what I would call their internet popularity and it has a lot to do with more of the business opportunity there. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, here's this article about how Jay-Z, and this is from 2019, he partnered with the NFL for the music and social justice campaign. And this is really, really important is because the NFL is trying to rebrand themselves after that incident with Kaepernick. And they really wanted to rebrand themselves and they wanted to transition from everything being about kneeling and having a bad narrative around that to where 
we're going to try to work on this social justice and music campaign. And what the NFL does, and they're very deliberate, is they will get a black person who they think black people have an affinity for, and they will partner with this black person and say, okay, we're going to do this initiative that is going to change our public perception. It's really a big PR play. And that black person will be rewarded for their participation in this. And we're not saying this is anything negative. We're just saying this is how these deals are structured. And we saw this with Jay-Z when he was working with the Brooklyn, uh, I think the Brooklyn Nets. He partnered with the NBA. He also partnered with that Russian billionaire who's worth like $40 billion. And it was Jay-Z's job to get the people of Brooklyn to be cool with the fact that they were going to get gentrified to put that stadium there. And eventually many of them were going to get gentrified about the Brooklyn. Because it was a lot more palatable because why? Well, they brought Jay-Z in and we have an affinity through Jay-Z. We have an affinity for Jay-Z. Uh, a lot of us live vicariously through black celebrities. And so we think if the black celebrity is successful, then that means that we're also successful because we feel like we got some type of relationship with this person who we really don't know in real life. We just maybe know through the internet or through their music. And that's cool because people understand that aspect of our psychology. Then they leverage these people, right, to do what they want to do. So that's what this deal really is. And like I said, this is not a judgment on Jay-Z. This is business. Jay-Z is doing this through his Rock Nation company. Okay. So his fledgling uh, entertainment company has the opportunity to work with a multi-billion dollar organization called the NFL that's full of owners that are way, way, way more successful than Jay-Z financially. So it makes sense for Jay-Z to do this deal as long as he doesn't have a moral or a value uh, contradiction or confliction with this particular type of scenario. So that's how this stuff starts. So here's this article. Uh, people used to look down on TMZ. What we found out over the years is TMZ probably is one of the most uh, consistent news platforms in the world because they get news before anybody else gets the news, right? So that's this article. Now, this is what people were saying. How come we didn't have newer artists, like younger artists, like artists that was under 30 years old, right? And a lot of people saying, well, these were the only people that would do the Super Bowl because a lot of black artists still have this objection to the NFL. Right. And that could be true. However, this was business for everybody that was involved. And I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about, because what we've done over the past, maybe say 10 to 15 years is we've confused the Internet with the actual music business. OK, so what we've done is we've taken this perception that because you have an Internet buzz, that's the same thing as you actually being somebody in the music business. Understand how the music business is structured. Um, you invest in an artist, the music company, they outlay capital to build up an artist. Right. They don't get paid until that artist right, can make money in the music industry. Most people don't sell physical records anymore. So the real money in the music industry now is coming from your streaming, right? Which um, the artist makes very little to no money, but the music company and the publisher makes money. And then also your tours, because most people are signing the 360 deals. And also some of them even have to give up some of their merch. However, the old school music industry, the way it was set up was the artist never expected to get rich off of the record sales unless you was able to do an outrageous amount of record sales you had to go out on tour to make your money. And that was the old school business model that literally worked for 30, 40 years because there was no internet to become famous off of. You had to get famous off that road, okay? And I think that's the disconnect between the older artist and the newer artist. A lot of people think because this person is big on YouTube, they're big on Twitter, they're big on you know these little social media platforms, it means that they mean something in the music industry. However, the real money isn't on those platforms. The real money is still on the road. And so therefore, if I sign a, a artist into a 360 deal and they can't go get shows, then what value do they have to me? Because I'm trying to get paid off their shows. That's why I invested in them. If they can't get shows, what value do they have to me? And I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So here's Snoop, right? We just going to look at Spotify. And I want to show you the comparison. So Snoop got 24 million listeners on Spotify. He's not even in the top 10. Got 24 million listeners, right? Okay. He just dropped a project. Now, what I want to understand is Snoop's from the old school. Snoop's 50 years old. Snoop's from a different era where you did not expect to get paid off of your record sales. The way those deals were structured until you could hit like really, really outrageous numbers in the millions, it was going to be very difficult to recoup off the record. However, you made your money on the road and Snoop comes out of that model. 
So Snoop is worth, has a net worth that is approximately around $150 million. It didn't come from record sales. It came from Snoop going and getting his money off the road. I wanted you to look at Snoop's tour dates, right? We coming out of the pandemic. These are Snoop's tour dates. March 21st, 24th, the 26th, of April. He doing the Southwest, then he doing Atlanta, right? Then we going in back to the Southwest. Then we hitting Cali, okay? Then we going overseas to Great Britain, all right? Now he's on tour some of these dates with him, Cube, E-40, and Too Short. Now these are all guys that people claim is old, but they getting tour money, right? They getting tour money, okay? E-40 been getting money out of the game forever. Same thing with Short. They getting tour dates though, so people will leave their house to come see them, right? Got to understand that. They're not big on the internet, but people will leave their house to come see them. Now Snoop going to the, he going to the UK. Got multiple dates in the UK. We in September. Go to Finland. Go to France. Go to Denmark. Go to Germany. Go to Great Britain. Go to Ireland. Right? And this is to be announced. So we got the last scheduled date on September 19th. So Snoop is touring from now in February all the way out into the fall. And most people stop their tours in the fall because, you know, they're trying to do the holiday, do the family time. But I want you to understand something that Snoop has shown to the industry that I'm still viable because why I can go get tours. And I want you to understand is that these venues have to pay money to have Snoop perform there. They're not just paying Snoop. They got to pay the publisher, right? They got to pay a licensing fee to have those particular songs perform there. Now let's go into Playboy Cardi. So now Playboy Cardi is one of the younger artists, you know, they got the internet fame. People know them on social media, yada, yada, yada. They're supposed to be setting the tone for the culture. Got 16 million listeners on Spotify. But I want you to look at this. Look at his tour dates. He don't really have a lot of tour dates. So then the question is, how does the music industry get paid off this guy if he doesn't do tours? How do we recoup off this dude if he doesn't do tours? So why would he be worth the investment if we can't get our money out of this dude? Now, he's an Interscope artist. But how does Interscope make any money off of this guy? How does the publisher make any money off this guy? And then how does he make any money? Because he hasn't shown that my fans want to see me live. Because we've conditioned a lot of the younger fans that everything's supposed to be done on the internet. You're not supposed to leave your house for anything. Okay, let's look at another guy. Little Nas X, really controversial, get a lot of buzz on the internet, yada, yada, yada. Had a really, really big song a few years ago, so we can't take that from him. Got 51 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Okay, those numbers are crazy. He has no tours scheduled for 2020, right? No tours, right? Look at his 2021. So let's start at 2019. These are the tour dates he's doing. Got some nice venues there, but also got some really small venues, right? And you don't see it packed full of dates, right? Got some decent, decent tour schedule though. We going into 2021. Decent arenas, decent venues, okay? But what you don't see is a massive tour outrun. But if we went by what the internet told us, if we went by what the outrage was, we would think Little Nas X was the biggest artist in the world, right? But I'm going to show you in a further slide what an artist looks like when they're touring and what their tour schedule looks like when they're at the top of their career, when they're really getting it like that. And I'm going to show it to you. But, you know, we would think that this guy's the biggest artist in the world based on the controversy around him. However, his fans haven't really shown that we're willing to leave our house and pay money to see this guy. Like I said, tour date's not nothing to be embarrassed about, but it's not what you would think it would be, but compare his tour date to Snoop's tour date. Snoop's supposed to be washed up, but Snoop getting money off that road though, right? Because Snoop really understands how the music industry actually works and how you show this industry that you're viable because the publishers, right? And the people that have an equity in your publishing, they get paid by these venues every time you go perform because the venue has to pay licensing. So it's profitable for the industry to back up an artist, right? That has tour dates. It, it makes money for everybody. It makes money for the artist. It makes money for the record label. It also makes money for the publisher, right? Then the venue makes money. Why? Because they're able to bring all those people in those people are not only going to buy tickets, they're going to buy concessions, yada, yada, yada. So everybody makes money. How do we make money off, off, off uh, this guy right here? How do we make money off this guy? He ain't got but three dates. 
He doesn't make money for anybody. So then why would we put money behind the guy? And then why would we give him a stage like the Super Bowl, which is supposed to be something aspirational? You're supposed to work your way there. You're not supposed to just show up and get there because you got uh, 16 million people on Spotify and everybody know your name and you got a baby from some, some chick out on the West Coast. That's not supposed to make you valuable in the, in the music business, right? Not the popularity game. I'm talking about the music business. And I think a lot of times we don't understand how to separate the two. It's a big difference between the popularity game and the music business. And it's some West Coast dudes like Too Short and E-40 that showed us back in the day, it's a big difference between the popularity game and the music business because 40 was checking big money out of the music business and most people didn't know who he was. And you had a lot of those artists out of New York City who everybody knew who they was and they, they publishing deals and their record deals was terrible. Right. But everybody knew their name. They was on television. They was on they, they the rap shows. And guys like E-40 was living right down the street from Gary Payton. But let's get to it. So we got Lil Nas X don't really have the shows. Now, listen, I got a big, big artist right now. Got us at the top of his game. That's The Weeknd. Now, The Weeknd did the Super Bowl, I want to say the year before. Right. Uh, there's a rumor and it hasn't really been verified. There's a rumor that that Super Bowl show. The weekend took $7 million of his own money and put that into the show. That's how much he wanted that show to work for him. But he's rolling right now. The weekend right now was rolling. I didn't know the dude was Ethiopian, but he's from Canada, so I get it now. Cold artist. I like his music. Everybody don't like his music. I like his music. I think he's a cold artist, right? And I think that this guy is going to have the kind of music to where he's going to be 65 years old and he's going to still be making money off his music even when he don't want to perform anymore because to me he has that kind of music that's just me personally everybody like what they like but i want to show you something right here's the weekend schedule now the weekend has canceled a lot of his dates now why did the weekend cancel his dates because he says that he want to do something in the fall that's going to be bigger but i think he canceled a lot of his dates because we still low-key in the pandemic and a lot of these dates, if you see, it was inside venues. And he's saying, well, he's going to reschedule to outside venues. OK, but I want to look at look at his scheduling. Right. Look at his scheduling. OK, we got Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had uh, the Smoothie Center in, in L.A. Smoothie King Center. I'm sorry. We had American Airlines in Dallas. Then he going to Colorado. Look at the dates, the 22nd, the 25th, the 27th. Look how fast they moving this dude around. This is how you move them when you're at the top, when you really are rolling and you're a cash machine for the industry. They just got you going everywhere. Why? Because everybody can get money off of you. This is when you got to be careful as an artist, because if you start picking up bad habits, nobody's going to say nothing. They just going to try to figure out how to keep you going because everybody's making money off of you. Right. So as an artist, you got to be real careful when you get to this level because you're a cash machine for everybody. So look at these dates. Look how fast they was going to move this dude around the country. Look how, look how many dates he got. The 15th, right? The 16th, he playing the same arena, back-to-back -back shows in Anaheim. Then the 22nd, we go to Glendale. 25th, we go to Fort Worth, right? The 28th, we go from Dallas, I'm sorry, which is the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We go down to the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida on the 28th. The 29th, we in Miami. The 30th, we do Miami again. The 1st, we go up to the ATL. The 4th, we in Atlanta, Georgia, right? The fifth, we do another date in Atlanta, Georgia. We're doing back-to-back -back dates. Then we go to UBS Arena on Long Island. We on Strong Island. Then we go to Buffalo, New York. Then we go to T-Dot, right? Then we go from T-Dot all the way to St. Louis, right? Then we go to Omaha. Then we go down from Omaha on the 16th. We on Austin, Texas on the 19th. See how they was moving this dude around? Now, he canceled these dates, but this was his tour schedule. Why? Because it makes sense because his fans will come see him. This is a different kind of artist. That's why he got the Super Bowl as essentially the only guy doing the Super Bowl. He headlined it. Now, he's 32 now. Most people will say, well, he's an old artist because, you know, on the Internet, a person in middle school, if you're 25 years old, you're older than them. That's just how the Internet works. This is a 32-year-old guy, but he's at the peak of his career. And you see the kind of dates he had. Now, he's going to reschedule all these dates. But I want to show you this guy was going overseas. He's going to Norway. He was going to Germany. He got multiple German dates. Then he was going to the Netherlands. Then he was going to the UK. Okay. Then he was going to Paris, France. Then he was going to Madrid. Then he going to France again. He was going to Italy. His tour run wasn't even going to stop to the 16th of November. That's how much money was on the road for this dude. Right. The weekend is getting to it. 
Now he's going to reschedule all of this because of these issues with the pandemic. But these was his tour dates that he has scheduled out. Because right now, his fans have been conditioned to understand we need to go see the weekend in person, not just listen to him on Spotify and watch his videos on YouTube. Okay. Now let's go in again to why we heard certain songs. We talk about the business again. Why do we hear the steel, the steel DRE, right? Cause if you watch Snoop, Snoop did, um, next episode and steel DRE, which came off that chronic 2001. Now we understand one, it's aftermath, it's Interscope. Still DRE. Dre wrote that song with Scott Storch. Right? I'm not Dre. Jay Z, my bad, wrote that song with Scott Storch. So you see how everything's connected? So everybody now gets paid off this, right? Because we all connected in this deal. It was an Interscope production. Pretty much everybody on that stage has something to do with Interscope on some level, some more than others, but on some level. Then if you study, Snoop didn't do anything from the chronic. Snoop didn't do anything from his solo album, even though they claim, right, that he has the death row stuff, but we haven't seen the catalog of what he actually owns. All the songs was done, was done off 2001 when Dre had left death row and had come fully over to Interscope under Aftermath, right? Didn't we do a song in which Jay-Z wrote a piece of the song or half the song or the whole song based on who you talk to? But this is the connection. And that's why I want people to really understand is that when you're looking at these type of events, these are industry events. They're not about the most creative artists. They're not about the best artists. They're industry events. Jay-Z is a industry person. His persona, his narrative is that he's this outlaw, yada, yada, yada. It's not true. The, the president of one of, I think of Rock Nation is a formal, is a former federal informant for the FBI. There's nothing outlaw about what Jay-Z has going on over there. It's just not. And no, no disrespect to the guy. He's done very well for himself business-wise and very well financially. But Jay-Z is part of the institution, right? He just uses his past as a way to market to people, right? But he's part of the institution. And so because people still believe he has this outsider appeal, right? They buy into it and I'm not mad at him. If it's working and you're making money, keep doing what you do. Because you saw him at the Super Bowl with his daughter. That girl's never going to have to work a day in her life. It just won't happen. You never have to work. Right? Now, if I was going to do my Super Bowl, here's the two artists I will put on the stage. The problem is nobody knows these artists. And as soon as these artists started performing, because nobody knows them, they will cut the TV off. And that's why they will be a bad look for the Super Bowl. Because the Super Bowl stage is really for a person that's hit a mainstream, right? And they hit enough of a mainstream where people will sit down and watch the show. It's not for up and coming artists. It's not for people that have not pushed through. It's for people that hit a mainstream. It's the reason why Bruno Mars was on that stage. Why? Because Bruno Mars is a big, big, big artist. He's a massive artist. Even though he's a younger dude, he has a, he's a massive artist. And that's what I want people to understand. These are industry corporate events. Therefore, they're going to do things that are going to have the widest amount of appeal. They're not looking for niche people. I listen to a lot of music, right? I listen to stuff people don't even know I would listen to. They would look at me like, you listen to that? Yeah. So Hook got 80,000 uh, listeners on Spotify. Most people have no idea who this artist is. She from, she from California. Another artist, BK The Ruler, got a million one listeners on Spotify. People have no idea who this artist is. It's an artist out of Atlanta, Georgia. Right. You put them on the Super Bowl stage, people will immediately cut they, they television off. Why? Who are they? I don't know any of their songs. And that's what I want people to understand. Now, because of this new audience that we have now that don't want to leave their house and go see shows, they starting to do this stuff in the metaverse. Right. So Warner Music Group to launch musical virtual concert in the sandbox metaverse. However, the problem with the metaverse is you have got to have equipment to watch the show. So the adoption is going to be. Can we get people to buy the equipment to come into the shows? I eventually believe that they will, especially as the price points on the equipment start to go down. I think the price point got to go down because to pay two, three hundred dollars to get the equipment just to see the show. I think that's going to be a big obstacle. OK, but if we can get the price points on the equipment to go down, I think this is going to be more normalized because we have a young audience 
that doesn't believe they should have to leave their house to support their to support the artist. They don't want to buy music out of the home. They want to buy it on their mobile device. They want to listen to music on their mobile device. And then they don't want to leave the house to go see a concert. They want to do everything in the comfort of their home. That's just how it is right now. Okay? Therefore, I think this is going to be the next lane, but it's going to take a minute to make this transition. But currently, the era that we're currently in right now, it's the artists that are worth the investment because they make money for everybody. Snoop makes money for everybody. The Weeknd makes money for everybody. Uh, Playboy Cardi doesn't make a lot of money for anybody. Nas creates a lot of controversy, but he's not making money for a lot of people. Just creating a lot of controversy, which they tried to turn into money, but it really didn't work because all the controversy is on the Internet. Right. And that's what people got to understand. So it's not to say that anybody's wrong because they felt like those people were too old to be on the stage. That's their opinion. They got a right to their opinion. And everybody has a right to critique the art. You know, it's put into the public domain and the public arena for people to critique it. So everybody got a right to do that. However, what I want people to understand is that when we're looking at these scenarios, especially when we start talking about music, we got to kind of understand how the music industry is set up and what makes the best business sense for everybody as kind of opposed to what do I think, right? Uh, the, the pop culture wants to see, but it doesn't matter if we show them that because we don't have a way of making money out of that. And the whole goal of all of that is to figure out how to make those situations lucrative for people as we go off into the future. So I hope you got some value from this. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.